In this video, we're going to talk about the power behind keyframes. Not only can keyframes record position, scale, and rotation, but they can also record and manipulate motion. So what is keyframe interpolation? Keyframe interpolation is a technical word telling you how the animation is going to move from one keyframe to the other. Is it going to move at a constant speed? Will it hold the previous position before reaching the next keyframe? Will it first move slow and then fast, fast and then slow? Let's take a look at the four most common keyframe interpolations you'll most likely be using in any software and look at how to use them. Here I have four balls animating from one side to the other at the exact same time and distance, all occurring within one second. These balls have different keyframe interpolations applied to them, as you can see. They are step, smooth, linear, and bezier. Let's start with step. A step keyframe records position, rotation, and scale, but does not tween. Meaning, if I create one pose and then another, the software will not move or create in-betweens from one pose to the next. It will hold that pose and snap to the next once it's reached the new pose or keyframe in the timeline. A step keyframe is the only keyframe that does not create tweens. This makes the process of planning out your animation and poses much easier. This is also known as blocking. All other keyframe interpolations create tweens between each pose or set of keyframes starting with smooth. A smooth keyframe is the default keyframe interpolation of Moho. It records position, rotation, and scale, and it does tween between keyframes. However, a smooth keyframe creates an interpolation with the principle of animation built in called slow in or ease in. This means that when the animation moves from one pose or keyframe to the next, the action decelerates when reaching its end position. This is naturally how most movement occurs but this default interpolation isn't always perfect. Next is the linear keyframe. This records the position, rotation, and scale, and it does tween between keyframes, but at a constant speed. Meaning, when it starts and stops, there is no acceleration or deceleration. When animating, this is best for camera movements, such as pans and zooms. This has its benefits, but it's rarely a keyframe interpolation I use personally. And last is the Bezier keyframe. This records position, rotation, and scale, it tweens keyframes, but it gives you full control of the motion. You can make these keyframes behave however you would like, but first we need to learn more about the motion graph in order to use Bezier keyframes. The motion graph can be found in the timeline right next to the tab labeled Sequencer. So the motion graph is where we're gonna be able to change the value of the Bezier keyframe. So right off the bat, you probably noticed that between channels and motion graph, I have these lines right here. Up and down vertically, this is supposed to represent distance inside of the motion graph. Now, right now you don't see anything. There's no lines, there's no curves, and yours probably might look the same way. So what I need to do in order to see what I need to edit in the motion graph, I'm gonna first have a layer selected. So in this case, I have the Bezier layer, and the layer has to have animation on it. So with the motion graph, I can use it to look at layers, I can use it to look at bone animation, point animation, pretty much anything that you can keyframe, I can look in the motion graph. But in order to activate it, I first have to select the animation channel. So in this case, I have a layer translation channel. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click that once. Now clicking that once shows me what that motion is. Now watch what happens when I hit play. Take a look at this motion graph. Do you see that I have this curve right here? This is representing the speed and the distance of this ball. So right here, I have the starting position on frame one, and this is its distance. Again, vertical is distance. And just like on the normal timeline, left to right is time. And as this ball is traveling, you can see it's getting further and further away, but it slowly slopes up, representing that it's slowly moving out. Then as it gets to the top part of this point B position, the ball is slowing in. In fact, this is an animation principle called slow in, slow out. Right here, the ball is slowing out. And as it's getting to this new position, it's slowing in. Now I can select any one of my layers and with the layer channel activated, I can see the different motion graph for each one of these layers. Now we'll go into what each one of those motion graphs are and what they mean once I first show you how to manipulate the Bezier keyframe. So right now I need to activate it in order to manipulate it. So to do that, I'm going to double click on the layer translation. Again, single click, is going to deactivate it. Single click again is going to activate it so I can see the curve and double clicking will activate it so that I can manipulate it. Okay, so now I see I have these three lines. I have a red line, a blue line, and a green line. The red line represents the x-axis. 
The blue line represents the Z axis and the green line represents the Y axis. And as you can see here, the only animation is on the X axis left to right represented by this red curve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna split up the dimensions so I can focus on one axis. Because there's only one axis being manipulated in this animation, I can hide the others to make this more clear. So to do that, go ahead and right click on the layer translation and then select separate dimensions. Now, as you can see here, I have an X, Y, and Z and they are highlighted in their respective colors. I'm gonna go ahead and click once on Z and once on Y to hide those two curves. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is how to navigate this motion graph because it can be a little bit tricky. To reset your timeline, all you have to do is hit the end key on your keyboard. And as you can see there, it's stretched down to the bottom. If I scroll in and out on my mouse wheel, you can see it's also moving, but it's zooming in vertically. And then the same thing, I have my keyboard shortcuts, page up and page down to zoom in and zoom out of my timeline. So I could either click on these two icons or I can use those keyboard shortcuts. But as you can see, the more I click on page up, it's going to just further zoom in, making it difficult to see what I'm actually looking at. So I'm gonna hit N just to go ahead and reset that view. And last, I can right click and drag up, down, left, right, if I better need to navigate this timeline. For right now, I'm just gonna hit N just to reset that. And let's talk about a little bit more about what's going on. Okay, so imagine frame one is point A and frame 25 is point B. On the motion graph, this represents distance. So from here to here, moving up vertically represents the distance of this ball. I can change the distance of this ball to actually make it move further away or closer than the other balls. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna scroll out with my mouse wheel a little bit here so I can have more room. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push that keyframe up. Okay, so you can see that the ball moved away as I push that keyframe up. And as I drag it down, I can move it closer. Again, that is because vertically, this is representing distance. So as I'm moving it up and down, that is simply just changing the distance of how far this ball is traveling. I can also move these keyframes left and right, and that's gonna change the time. So let's go ahead and have it travel the same distance as the other balls, but in half the time. So I'm gonna reset my keyframes really quick here to line that back up. Okay, so we're lined up once again. So now I'm gonna drag this ball so it travels in half the amount of time, so on frame 13. Now to make sure I don't move my keyframe up and down in distance, I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna left click and I'm gonna drag. Now watch what happens when I play this back. See now how the ball is still traveling the same amount of distance, but in half the time. In fact, I can do that with any keyframes in the motion graph. So now let's talk about this curve right here and what this means. Again, remember that vertical is distance and left to right is time. As this ball moves through time, this line is representing its motion or its travel. And you can see right here in the first five frames that it is moving slowly away from the starting distance. Then as I move to frame 13, which is halfway in time and in distance, this is gonna be the fastest that it's gonna be traveling in this motion. Because as it rounds up to this curve, around 21 to 25 frames, you can see that the curve is starting to get closer as it gets to the end position. And that's because it's closing in on the distance, which makes the animation itself slow down. Now I'm gonna turn on my onion skins to better illustrate this. Okay, so right now on my timeline, I have my onion skins turned on. As I move through time, you can now see that as the ball is traveling to this midpoint, it is widest in spacing. The closer you have your drawings per each frame, the slower the animation. The further away the spacing is, the faster the animation. So notice that it gets faster, and then it gets to this end point, and the spacing gets tighter again. So hopefully at this point, that is clear enough as far as what this Bezier curve does. So now really quick, let's take a look at the other curves and then we'll talk about how we can manipulate these Bezier curves. So let's start with smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and select the layer. And then as you can see here, it is right now active because I can see the active X axis in red right here. So now try to imagine what the motion will be doing as you're looking at just this curve. Let's go ahead and hit play. Okay, so right away, notice that smooth is moving faster than Bezier. That's because right here, it is just starting right out. There's a little tiny slope, but not enough to make it look like there's any sort of slowing out. But the slow in is almost identical, as you can see there, as the two start to slow down into the end position. This curve is about the same. Now let's take a look at linear. Linear, like I said, is a constant motion. 
If we're looking at the distance of this travel from this point to this point, it's all the same. There's no change in speed, it's constant. Now let's take a look at step. Step is a little bit different. Notice that the line holds all the way through to about frame 24. Then on frame 25, it jumps right up. Now right here at the top, it looks like it's just blinking from one side to the other, because that's literally what it's doing. It's just holding its position, and then a frame before, it jumps to the new position. Now let's hop back over to the Bezier layer. Let's say I wanted to create the same motion as the smooth interpolation. With smooth, I have no options. There's nothing for me to be able to change this curve. This is all built into the keyframe interpolation. However, in Bezier, notice I have these handles. And if I left click and I drag, you can see that I can actually change the motion path inside the graph. So if I wanted to try and make this into smooth, it would be something like this. So this handle would be lined up with this graph, and then this would probably have a little bit of a curve towards the end. This might be pointed down just slightly. And let's see if we can get a smooth interpolation from this Bezier handle. Pretty close. You can see it starts off just a little bit faster. And what's really cool is I can actually adjust that. I can go to the frame where I can see where it's slightly leading just a little bit, and I can move that down just a hair. So now this tells me that the smooth keyframe does have a little bit of a curve right here at the bottom, and then it speeds up. So if I hit play, there we go. We have a near identical smooth keyframe made with Bezier. Now let's say I wanted to do linear. Well, linear is pretty easy. All I would need to do is just line the curves up so they're exactly the same, so that they're constant. It's a constant distance going up as it is speed. And as you can see there, there's linear, there's Bezier side by side there, and they look nearly identical. Now, the only keyframe that you can't interpolate the, in this case is gonna be step, because step actually doesn't have any interpolation. So if I was trying to mimic this, it would be something like this, and then this would be down. But notice that I have this curve which means that no matter what, there's still distance happening as it's traveling through time. So if I hit play, it's gonna be like a really, really slow start and then it'll be really fast. See, just like that. But if we were talking about the principle of animation, ease in, ease out, this is actually easing out of this starting position. And then it's just rapidly going to the next position. So let's say I wanted to do an ease in and ease out equally. Well, I'm gonna position my handle right about there and I'm gonna pull my other handle out right about here. I'm just gonna tighten this up just a little bit more because what I wanna do is I wanna create a more visible ease out. Right here, there's not really an ease out because of its distance. It's just kind of launching right off as it's going through time. But if I go ahead and I pull this a little bit further, notice how I have this nice curve here and then going in, I have this other nice curve. This is actually pretty popular and common when you're doing motion graphics where you have this ease in, ease out effect. In fact, there is an ease in, ease out inside of Maho. If I highlight both of these keyframes and I right click, I can select ease in, ease out. Notice how the curvature is almost exactly the same. So there are a lot of different interpolations that you can actually mess with to get some pretty cool results. However, for me personally, I really like to change and manipulate my own motion. So I prefer Bezier if I'm going to be doing any sort of easing in and outs. But feel free to take a look at any of these other interpolations, change them within the motion graph, and before they even play out, try to understand what it is that they're doing. Here's another one. Here's Noisy. Notice that the motion curve is just kind of all jaggedy. Well, watch what happens as I play this out. See how it kind of bounces as it's moving through time? Here's another one, here's bounce. Again, take a look at the distance. It's nearly already right around frame eight, the same distance as it would be on frame 25. Then it bounces back and then it jumps up again to the same distance, bounces back and then jumps up again. And watch what this looks like. It looks like a bounce. 
Now, not a very good bounce, which is why I don't really prefer to use these keyframe interpolations for this type of animation, but it does give you a good starting point. And that's pretty much the basics of keyframe interpolation and the motion graph that I wanna cover.